Hey guys, welcome to Mail Monday, a weekly series that's not so much about the gameplay, but instead is about your letters and my answers to them. Let's get this going. All right, so some of you have asked for adult questions. Let's get this one. And uh, I also censored this a little bit to keep him more anonymous. Hey Woody, I love your videos and I've been an active subscriber to you since you started. And I just wanted to say keep up the great work. Thanks. I have a bit of a dilemma and after watching your recent video about career choice, it kind of opened my eyes. I'm a 21-year-old accountant in England. The job can be demanding at times, but that's not the issue. The issue stands with my manager that works with me. She arrives at work late almost daily, and once she gets in, she decides to go out on breakfast for an hour and a half. And like I said, the job can be demanding at times. And it's working in an office, so it's very team-built and driven, but she does nothing. She even takes hour and a half long breaks to go shopping. And once she comes back, she expects everything to be done. And it's not as if you're not going to hear it from her. And when the boss calls, you can tell she has her tongue so far up his bum laughing at all of his jokes i really hate my job and much like you thinking about what would happen if you were to get into an accident and how much time you would have off work i think about what would happen if she were getting into an accident oh boy <laughs> i would love that i guess the point of this whole message is for your opinion should I leave my job if I'm unhappy, or should I wait for another job to come along to fall back on? I feel like I'm about to break if I carry on working there, so any advice would be appreciated. Thanks, Woody. You need to find another job. Um, this is probably obvious to a lot of people watching this, but if you've never been in this spot before, a spot where you really need your job, then you don't know quite how hard it is to leave it. It's a big deal, right? You, that employer becomes a sense of your self-worth. That employer becomes your only source of income. They're, you know, they're your food. They're your shelter. They're everything. I knew he was coming, by the way. I wasn't just camping. Uh, it's hard to leave your job because you wonder, like, what are you going to do? What are you going to be when it's gone? On top of that, employers have this knack for making you feel like you're lucky to be employed. You know, when you're working at some place and, and it's like, wow, the economy is tough out there. You're lucky to have a job at all. Or you, you get to thinking like, you know, man, this is the only place. How would I adjust to a new job? I've gotten good at this one. Would I be good at the next one too? So I've had about eight jobs in my lifetime. You know, this is like grown up jobs. And uh, I know the answer to this. The answer is, yeah, you'll be good at the next one. You'll be just fine. And you're not lucky to be employed. They're lucky to have you. <laughs> it sounds like, you know, you're a high performer and you're frustrated that other people nearby you are not performing at the same level that you are. Man, people would love to have somebody built like you. People, you're wired as a guy who's just you're like, I'm getting so much done, and, and and you're you're raising the level of the team around you. You're a winner. So it, it sounds to me like this place isn't worthy of your services, right? They've got they've got a team gamer tag guy on here. They they don't know what they have. So. Um, you need to get another job. Now, the question was, you know, do I leave my current job before I find a new one? And my, it, like, I haven't heard anything about you trying to get a new job. I haven't heard you say that, uh, yeah, you know, I've been trying to get a new job. It's not really working out. What should I do next, etc. No, that, that, that's not what I'm hearing at all. All I'm hearing is, uh, you know, heck, I'm thinking about just stopping. And my answer to that is, you know what? go get a new job, make it happen. Why don't you, you know, find another one while you're getting this one. And then you can change your attitude towards your current job too, which is kind of like, a, instead of it being your everything, it's, you know, just where you are at the moment because you have an escape plan. You know, it, it opens your eyes when you start seeing the other people who are interested in employing you. It, it makes you feel wanted and you need to do that right now. So, uh, so yeah. It, oh, and by the way, it is completely appropriate to measure your boss. That, that's how this goes. That, that's how you're supposed to do it. You know, but your boss measures you. And what I always measured my bosses on are, you know, like how quickly am I getting promoted? How quickly are my peers getting promoted? If this is a boss that's not coming through with promotions on like on a per capita level that other bosses are, then I think this guy's not performing. If, um, you know, if the boss isn't growing me, isn't, isn't you know, grooming me for the next gig, then I think to myself, this boss is a loser. That, that's part of their job. They're an HR manager. I'm, I'm not, I don't give a crap about how fast the boss is getting promoted or how productive the entire department is. That's not how I measure bosses. I measure bosses on how well they're growing the people that work for them. That, to me, is their primary job. And she's not getting that done. She's just there chewing you out, uh, you know, sucking the life out of you and then getting the rewards on her own screw her man she's not doing it right and uh and she's unworthy of you so go make that happen get yourself a new job and uh you know <laughs> when you get your new job by the way as an interview tip 
interview the boss, right? You know, sit there and, and ask them some questions. If an employee messed up, how would you handle that? And what does your department do? They're going to ask you if you have any questions for them and you better have them. You better do it. Show an interest in, in you know, what this next job is going to be like. And, uh, and you know, you'll look better in the interview too. I've interviewed lots of people. And, you know, when I say, hey, do you have any questions for me? And they just shrug their shoulders as if they're either incapable of thinking or uninterested in what they're going to be doing. That's not impressive at all. I'm a 14-year-old boy and I really need your help. My dad recently found out that my mom's been cheating on him with her ex-husband for about three months. I thought it would just end in a divorce, and that would have probably happened anyway considering they've been fighting a lot. But a week ago, my mom decided to take my dad to court over custody so she can get paid for child support. He really is depressed, and now he has twice the workload since she left, so I barely see him. I really need some advice because I'm having a really hard time coping with it. Please just PM me or a mail Monday would be great. Thanks a lot. So I, I kind of want to take inventory here. You know, I know that you called out your mother for cheating, but you also said that they've been fighting a lot. And, you know, sometimes the the relationship falling apart is just a a downstream effect of the fighting that happens all the time. And uh, yeah, I I guess what I'm saying here is sometimes while look, I I don't condone the cheating. It's, uh, I, I think it might be wrong to just put the blame on one person alone. It's a relationship and the thing kind of fell apart. And that's unfortunate, but but that's what happened. Uh, back on, on taking stock here, what I haven't heard is them having any problem with you, right? Like, I think you need to know that this isn't your fault. You need to know that, you know, you're not the, the cause of this. And that as far as I can tell, they both seem to love you and want to spend time with you. I, I imagine the hardest part of this whole process that they're going through is dealing with the fact that they don't get you 24 by 7 like they used to. And, and you know, that's the struggle that your parents are dealing with. Um, man, it's rough. So, so as for, you know, like how to cope with it, like, man, it, it's, it's important for kids to understand that that, like, home base, that, that, like, stable platform from which the rest of their life is lived is, is there for them. And while you now have two home bases, you still have like two homes that are there for you, that are there to support you. It's like I, I, you say that you, know, you don't get to see your father as much anymore, but I bet he's also feeling the same way about you. And, you know, if you, I bet, you know, you can call him a, a lot of divorced parents and you should ask for this if you don't get it already, give their kids a cell phone so that, you know, they're always there for them. You know, and, and I bet you could get that if you need it. If you said, dad, you know, I, I want a phone. So I can always call you, know, you and mom. This is that you're always there for me, you know, and, and you'll get it. <laughs> I'm sure that you'll get it. Um, and then you can use it and, and just know that, you know, shocks. I, I wish I had an answer for this. I wish there was a way to make your family perfect. It's not though, right? It, it, it's going through a struggle right now, a temporary struggle, I hope, but a struggle. And, uh, but you're still loved by your parents and you still have that sort of supportive base for you, it's just, you know, coming from two directions instead of one now. And, uh, yeah, I, I'm sorry about the challenges you've been going through, but um, that's that's that. As for the you know, the money issues that your parents are struggling over, you know, who should be getting child support and, and things like that, then, um, you know, that I almost want to say just stay out of it. Let your parents handle that, and if they even bring it up to you, say like, you know, that's between you and mom. I, I don't really know what's right in this situation. And, and even, you know, the adults don't always know what's right. It's tricky to figure out who pays for what. And, and sometimes when the mandated child support is, is lower, that just means that the, that the, the person with more money ends up paying for all the you know, odds and ends, the dance classes, the football fees or, or whatever. Um, yeah. But, uh, anyway, it sounds like you're loved. And, uh, and that your parents just, just broke up. I'm sorry for your troubles, but, uh, uh, you know, keep in mind that the people care about you. I'm 18 years old and I'm simply a loser. I dropped out in high school. I've never had a job. Honestly, all I do is sit at home in the computer and I also play quite a bit of Xbox. I'm just now working on my driving permit. So I've had a girlfriend for two full years and I'm honestly in love with her. She is my everything and I plan on marrying her within the next two or three years when she is done with school and everything before I go to sleep. All I can think about is what am I going to do? How am I going to have a family with her and support her and my life together? And I constantly just want her to leave me because I feel like I'm going to ruin hers, ruin her life. 
What can I do, Woody? All I want to do is spend my life with this girl, and I'm so afraid that I'm going to be nothing. Here's the thing, man. Like, being loser can be a lifestyle, and being successful can be addicting. And, and you need to, to get that taste of success and, and teach yourself who you really can be, who you really are. You, you're not living up to your potential right now, right? Like, that's that's fairly straightforward. We all we all know this. But um, where you're going to head from here is a whole new place, right? If Why don't you just put a resume together? Why don't you work on your GED? And, um, you, you know, like... <laughs> You need to be proud of yourself. And then once you get that, then you start to think like, oh, I'm going to do the next thing. I'm going to do the next thing. You're going to have your day and you're going to say, that was cool. I'm going to go have another. That's the thing, right? How often are you really proud of yourself? Like, how often do you think to yourself, you know what? <laughs> that was pretty special. I did something that not everybody can do. That you can do that. You can get that. You can have that. And it's it's a pretty big deal. So, um... Yeah, I, like, I, I wish I knew how to state this better, how, I, how to say it more eloquently. But you need to get in the winner's circle to understand like how nice it is to be in the winner's circle. That's your game plan. So, um... You know, so I ask you, like, what is your first step here? Are you going to go find a GED class? Are you going to go back to high school? I don't know how old you are. Are you going to go to community college? Are you going, and, and you might hear community college, oh, no, yeah, school wasn't for me. Dude, it can be. It can be. You know, anything can be for you. So, you know, I, <laughs> I've had bad grades. I've had bad jobs. I've had, I've been fired from a job a long time ago, but I got fired one time. Um, like, I understand down, and I also understand up. I, I, I've been as low as you are. <laughs> I've been lower than you are. And, uh, you know, the, the thing that you need to burn into your head is that it's not over, right? Life is long. You're sitting here saying, oh, my gosh, I have no future. I'm going to pull down this girl. What? No future? You're freaking 18 years old. You have a wide open future. All you have to do is decide to seize it. Decide to take it. Decide to make it yours. And uh, you know, you know what? After you see this, why don't you just start? Just do something, right? You know, you probably on your on your computer right now. Type up a resume, or go Google search for GED classes, or you know, do your thing. I'm sorry, I said I didn't. I said I didn't know how old you were. You're 18. Go Google search for GED classes. Go do your next step. You know, think about what you want, and then make that yours, and uh, you know, make it a reality. And then your girlfriend will see you in a whole new light. I know the video's over, but I want to keep going. You owe it to your partner to be a complete person, and I don't think you're giving her that right now. You don't want to lose her, right? Let that be your motivation if that needs to be your motivation. But you need to offer her, you know, a, a guy who stands on his own two feet and ha and brings something to the game as opposed to, you know, j just being the, the passenger car to her engine in this train of, of relationship love. Maybe this analogy is not working. But, um, but anyway, right now, Go Google something. Go go figure out like what your next step is and, and make it happen. Get it started. And when you do that, when you get that reply from them, when you take your first GED class, when you pass that test, you're going to think to yourself, I'm a whole new person. I'm a, a successful person. I'm a person who can do anything. And then that's going to be the new you. So uh, make it happen. Good luck. If you're new around here and you enjoyed the video, you can click on subscribe. If you're not new and you liked it, click on like. Show me some love. <laughs> uh, top video is about lag compensation. I rarely fuss about Modern Warfare, but I, I made a break from my normal rule and, and decided to, to let you know about some of the challenges I've had. The bottom one was a really well-received video, one of my highest rated in a long time, about what happens after high school. And uh, and I go and I talk about you know, an alternative to the, to the normal way that people do this. So uh, pretty good videos. I feel like I'm on a hot streak. You can let me know what you think and have a nice day.